What's up, Star Wars fans? Today, I want to review Episode 8 of the Ahsoka series, the Season 1 finale. The episode starts with Morgan Elsbeth telling Grand Admiral Thrawn that their cargo is secure and they're ready to head back to the known Star Wars galaxy. Morgan Elsbeth is then rewarded by the Night Sister Mothers. She gets some sort of Night Sisters level up and is given a sword worthy of a true Night Sisters warrior. I wasn't a huge fan of this moment because I really felt like it gave away the idea that now Morgan Elsbeth is going to be the one to face down Ahsoka, Ezra, and Sabine, and this made a already pretty transparent episode even more easier to predict. That said, the next scene is definitely one I didn't see coming, and that is Ezra building a lightsaber, and it was great to hear Ezra talking about his former master, Kanan Jarrus, and Hu Yang sharing with Ezra that he actually helped his former master with the construction of his lightsaber. That said, after a brief run in with some TIE fighters, Ahsoka's ship is damaged, and Ahsoka, Sabine, and Ezra have to proceed on foot. Now, in my prediction video, I said this is a great opportunity for Dave Filoni to really showcase exactly how amazing a strategist Thrawn is, and I was hoping that Thrawn wasn't going to rely too much on the magic of the Night Sisters. But unfortunately, that's exactly what happens. We don't really get to see Thrawn as a great grand strategist. He doesn't really have any elaborate plan. He mostly just relies on the witch's connection to the Force to help fight the Force of the Jedi. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was amazing seeing Ezra with a new blue lightsaber fighting alongside Ahsoka and Sabine, and when the Night Sisters brought all those stormtroopers back to life, that was certainly a fun moment that I can't wait to relive in some sort of video game in the future. Likewise, the beginning of the duel between Ahsoka Ahsoka and Morgan Elsbeth was absolutely spectacular. I thought it was just as good as any of the other duels in this series. It was also fun to see Ezra and Sabine facing off against death troopers that seemed to be brought back to life by the Night Sisters, and it was a nice payoff that Sabine actually got to use the Force to retract her lightsaber and defeat the death trooper. I really hope that Dave Filoni is setting up Sabine to be this individual that brings the Jedi and the Mandalorian together to defeat the Imperial Remnant and Thrawn. But that said, another important moment where Sabine is able to use her force powers is when Ezra jumps the huge gap between the tower and Thrawn's Star Destroyer, allowing Ezra Bridger to head back to the known galaxy with Thrawn, but unfortunately trapping Sabine and Ahsoka back on Peridia. Personally, again, I thought this was a nice twist for what I thought was a pretty predictable episode. It was great to see Ezra, Chopper, and Hera reunited at the end of the episode. That said, what I didn't think was all that great was when Sabine turns around and decides to join her master Ahsoka in fighting what's left of the Stormtroopers and Morgan Elsbeth. I mean, I know they were Stormtroopers, but it just seemed a little ridiculous that Sabine was able to overcome so many of them. And to be honest, at this point in the fight, I just wasn't a fan of the choreography and how she was moving. Which is really too bad, because this series has definitely had some great lightsaber duels and fight choreography, but for me personally, it's really been hit or miss. From here, Sabine and Ahsoka are picked up by Hu Yang and are in hot pursuit of Thrawn, and again I felt a little let down because this could have been a moment where Thrawn had some sort of grand strategy to trap Sabine and Ahsoka as he escapes, but as it turns out, Sabine and Ahsoka were just out of time, and that was the Grand Admiral's great strategy, just slow down the heroes just enough so so that he could escape. From here, we get a brief moment where Shin seems to be joining some of the locals. Personally, I wish she would have rejoined with Morgan Elsbeth and Thrawn. It would have been amazing to see her and Morgan Elsbeth facing off against our group of heroes, Ezra, Sabine, and Ahsoka. But I also like the idea that Dave Filoni has something planned for her in the future. From there, we get my favorite part of this episode. We see Balin on what looks to be a statue made out of stone in the side of a mountain in the shape of the father and the son, the Mortis gods from the Clone Wars. I mean, that was one of the craziest story arcs in all of the Clone Wars, and it was so cool to see them brought into live action, and I absolutely can't wait to see what the father is pointing at and what exactly that white light is off in the 
the distance. But that certainly isn't the only mystery that Dave Filoni leaves us with at the end of Season 1. We see Thrawn delivering the cargo of the Night Sisters, and I'm certainly interested in speculating on exactly what that cargo is, and what it could mean for the known Star Wars galaxy, but we'll save that for another movie as we move on to one more thing, and that is we get to see Morai at the very end of this season, as well as a brief moment where we see a force ghost of Anakin Skywalker. But certainly the series peaked in episode 4 and 5, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Did you love this finale? I certainly hope you did, my friends, and as always, I'm Mike, and remember, the force will be with you always.